Today, I'm going to do a video on how to install a security light just like this underneath the eave of your home. I'm going to do this where there wasn't one existing before, and I'm going to show you how to run the electric over there and all that good stuff. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to figure out is, is where are you going to put the light? Now, for me, I'm putting it in this back corner of the house right here, which happens to be about 25 feet that way, so it's not too bad to get the wire over here. Speaking of wires, the next thing you're going to want to know is, is where am I going to get my power from? Well, the obvious answer is the attic light. I have an attic light in this attic, and many of you do too, so that's where I'm pulling from. It's not a heavy load, so it shouldn't be any problem. So obviously, when you want to start a project like this, you want to cut off the power. That way, you're going to be safe. So all I've done so far is I've taken the cover off and unscrewed the outlet and pulled everything out of the box. Let's just unscrew these wire nuts and take everything loose. All right, so I got all the new wires in there and now we're ready to accept the new wires when they get here. If you're finding any value in this video, please click that like button below and subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Okay, so back to the video. So if you have a soffit like I do right here, you'll have to take that apart a little bit so you can gain access to the inside. If you have gutters, you may have to uh, unscrew the gutters a little bit and pull them away from the house right where you wanna work at. So I'm just installing this board right here so that we have something to mount our new light to. And I'm going to use this round uh, smart box right here. What I'm doing right here is, is I'm kind of making the, uh, the bottom of the box flush with the soffit. I don't want that to be way up inside of there because when you tighten the, uh, the light to it, it's going to suck the soffit in and we don't want that. So I'm just going to check it again right there to make sure that's exactly where I want it. All right, so we can make a nice accurate mark on our soffit piece. What I've done is, is I've installed the uh, plate upside down and I've taken this center screw right here and I've ground it down on a bench grinder to a point right here. What this is going to do is, is when I put the soffit back in place, I'm going to be able to push that through and make a perfect mark for the center of that. Then all I have to do is uh, trace it from the back. I'll use that same pin and I'll, I've got a nice round plate right there. I'll just trace it from the back and cut that puppy out. It's going to look just like that, and it's going to be beautiful. So I'm taking this fiberglass fishing rod, and I've taped the wire to the end of it, and I'm going to feed it over the wall. You don't want to put that too close to the roof because obviously there's a lot of nails in the roof. So I'm just up in the attic here. Now be careful if you're not real familiar with walking in attics. you got to know exactly where to step. Otherwise, you're going to fall right through the drywall. So be very careful with this. And I'm just going to pull my wire through to where I need it to go. And we're going to feed it through down here and staple it on. That way I can put my soffit back. All right. Very good. All right. I've got my wire coming from beyond those HVAC ducts down there, running along the ceiling right through here underneath the ductwork coming up through here right alongside this 2x4, and it's coming out right here and into the box. Now, of course, your wiring is going to be different. I'm only just showing you what I did. Now, as far as stapling goes, I went about every four feet along the way, and I noticed that something happens to wood in the attic over time. The heat from the attic just petrifies the wood or something like that, and it gets really hard and the staples have a tendency to bend and twist when you're trying to drive them in, and it really is a pain in the neck. But I do have a simple solution for that. What you can do is kind of tap your staple in and mark your spot right there where you want the staple, and then pre-drill those holes into your marks right there that you just made. I know it's extra work, and also be careful not to uh, drill your wire. I know it's extra work, and of course, if you have a big project, that's not practical. But on a little project like this, it does help a lot. It saves staples and a lot of aggravation. Now, one thing I want to mention here is you don't want to overstaple the wire. 
What I mean by that is, is you're going to smack that staple in tight against the wire. You really don't want to do that. What you want to do is put the staple in so that it's just touching the wire, just like that. Leave yourself enough room so that the wire can wiggle back and forth. It's holding the wire and it's not going anywhere. All right, so let's get this puppy hooked back up. Now, normally I like to use my wire strippers as a reference of where to cut the wires off at. It's a quick way to measure it and it gives me about eight inches or so. So we're just gonna cut that right off right about there. Now to split this, just use a good sharp razor knife and try to stay in the center. And obviously try not to cut yourself and just peel that puppy just like a banana, just like so. All right, so these wires are a little bit cold, so they're kind of stiff, but you know, it's working anyway, no problem there. Just go ahead and cut that off, leaving enough jacket on the inside. Now, usually I wanna start with the grounds, so I've got all my grounds twisted together, but I'm gonna need two pigtails to attach to my two switches, so I left one long, and then I added a second pigtail to that uh, bunch right there. So I got five in total, and we're just gonna uh, twist them together with my Lyman's pliers right there, and then this way I can put the wire nut back in there. All right, just slide that puppy on there and tighten it up. Now I've got two pigtails, one for each switch. All right, so go ahead and push all the other wires out of the way and push the ground back into the box. I kinda like to fold it and push it back there the best as I can. Same thing with all the neutrals. We're gonna wanna tie them together. These are all different lengths and I don't really like that, so I'm gonna cut them off the same length and go ahead and peel them. All right, now if I didn't mention this before, we're using 14 gauge wire here. That's what was originally here. That's what I've got going to my light and that's what's coming from the panel box. This is running to a 15 amp breaker, so be careful with that. You don't wanna mix up your wire sizes with the wrong breaker. All right, so same thing as before. We're gonna go ahead and twist all our neutrals together with the Lyman's pliers and then add the wire nut back on there. All right, same thing, kind of fold it up and push it back in the back of the box the best as you can, trying to keep the bulk down. All right, so let's talk about our hot wires. We've got this one here going to our existing attic light. This one right here is power coming in. This one's going to the garage door opener and this one is going to the new light we just installed. So what I need to do is install two pigtails on our hot lines to supply power to the two switches that we're gonna put in. So those two go on a switch, and I've made these two pigtails right here. We're gonna add those in with the hot wires and twist them all together. That way we can supply power to our switches. Just add the wire nut and try to push everything in the back the best as you can. All right, so when you do these switches, make sure that the, uh, the curl on the wire, the hook, is going in the same direction as the screw tightens up. Now, it doesn't make any difference on these if you put the hot on the top or the hot on the bottom or the light fixture, it doesn't really matter. They can go either way, it makes no difference at all. So I got one power and one switch right there. You know, one's going to the attic light, one's coming from power. Just carefully push everything back into the box and make sure you look and make sure you don't have any grounds or anything near those hot screws. You wanna make sure nothing is shorting where it doesn't belong. And just go ahead and tighten that puppy up. Here I've got my Leviton Decora Edge switch right here. It's a very cool little push, click, and done setup. It's the only one I had that matched. So we'll just go ahead and use that one. All right, so just insert that one. One's power, one goes to our new light. And then of course I got the ground hooked up and I didn't show that. All right, so what we gotta do at this point is put the cover back on and we're done. So let's go ahead and check out the light. All right, so I've got my wires coming through and we're just gonna tighten up this plate, right, just like so. And I could have done a little better job on this ground. I'll go back and fix that later. All right, so very straightforward hookup. We got green to ground, white to white, and black to black. Very easy on that, no problem there. Just go ahead and push everything back into the, um, the box, the round box that's inside the soffit. Push all your wires through. I've got the screw in the middle and the gasket on the light also. And we'll just tighten that up and we'll adjust it. Looks like the light is working. All right, hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.